This is a short presentation about auscultation. It's intended for students attending respiratory placements at Leeds Teaching Hospitals as part of your induction package. The objectives for the session are to discuss why we use auscultation as part of our assessment, to revisit anatomy, to orientate you to whereabouts you're listening and um, relate that to the um, lung anatomy, discuss the correct technique for auscultation and discuss types of breath sounds and their link to um, clinical uh, signs. And then at the end of the presentation, there's a link to some sound clips so that you can start to familiarise yourself with some of those breath sounds. So first of all, why we auscultate? Um, we use auscultation as part of our assessment of the chest. It helps us to verify objective findings. So we link it with all of the other parts of our assessment. And you've hopefully looked at this within the multi-systems assessment um, presentation but we would also observe the chest so for example if we noticed when we're observing breathing pattern that the patient's chest isn't moving um, equally on each side that we would auscultate to see if the, our findings confirm what we've already seen and help us build a picture of what's going on. We can also use it to determine appropriate treatment or intervention. So, for example, if we listen to somebody's chest and they, we hear a lot of crackles, we can consider why they have crackles and is that related to secretions and therefore which treatment might be appropriate to um, resolve some of the problems that that patient has. And then it also works very well as an objective measure of our treatment effectiveness. So, for example, if we've done a treatment um, to try and clear some secretions, we'd hope that we hear less crackles afterwards. Just going to recap um, a little bit about the anatomy of the lungs now so that we can think about where we're placing the stethoscope and where we're actually listening to. This helps us to um, be more specific in um, interpreting our findings of auscultation. So it's worth bearing in mind that the apex of the lungs extend two and a half centimetres roughly above the clavicles. So you may, particularly if you want to listen to what could be happening around the apex, you might you need to place your stethoscope above the clavicles and just be aware that if you are um, listening below the clavicles you're not necessarily he hearing the very top of the lungs. Anteriorly the lungs extend down to the sixth rib and at the base, um, posteriorly the base of the lungs extend down to the tenth rib. So we need to consider the underlying anatomy when we're listening to the chest in simple terms, we want to make sure that we're not listening to a kidney if we're uh, listening in the wrong place, for example. So these pictures show, um, like I've just said, about where the uh, lungs extend down to anteriorly sixth rib and posteriorly the, um, tenth rib. The pleura extends further. Um, the picture on the right of the screen um, shows you the um, division of lobes within the lungs and it's worth noting um, how far up the um, lower lobes extend when you're looking posteriorly. So thinking when you're auscultating posteriorly um, that you can be listening to the lower lobe when you are um, quite what you might feel is far up the patient's chest and when you look on the lateral view um, you can see that the oblique fissures um, sort of uh, cross and again you might be able, you might be less certain of where you're, you're listening to there so you might want to revisit your um, lung anatomy in a little bit more detail and, and um, as you're listening to a chest to really think about where you're placing your stethoscope it's important to get to know your stethoscope and make sure that you're using it correctly. So um, making sure that the earpieces are facing forward and fit snugly in your ears um, when you place them in and that you use the diaphragm side to so the flat side of your stethoscope when you're listening to breath sounds. And what you can do is just tap that gently when you um, 
pop your stethoscope into your ears and if you're not hearing anything just spin it round it might just be that the other side was open so our technique if we can get the patient in the best position possible then that really helps so if you can get them sitting up that would be ideal so that they can expand their lungs um, more effectively and you'll hear better quality breath sounds ask them to breathe through their mouth we compare left to right um, so we would listen to the left upper lobe and then the right upper lobe as opposed to sort of going all the way down one side and then always down all the way down the other side um, remembering that the bases will sound quieter than the apices. Starting at the top of the chest and moving downwards, but as I said, um, uh, top left, top right, mid right, uh, sort of mid left, mid right. Um, so you're moving down, um, but listening to both sides. And it's best to listen directly over skin, not over clothing, so that you avoid any um, sort of additional sounds that make it difficult to interpret what you're hearing. This diagram shows the auscultation point. So as I said previously, um, we're listening to one side, then moving to the equivalent point on the other side, then um, moving down and um, making sure that we listen sort of equally. A little bit of problem solving in case um, you're hearing some strange things and you're thinking what's going on um, particularly if you've got a ventilated patient um, be aware of any water that's um, sitting in the tubing or if you've got a patient who's on some cold humidification or, or any sort of humidified oxygen really you could have um, some water pooling in there and you'll get this sort of rattling noise and you might think oh this person's chest sounds terrible they've got loads of crackles um, but actually if you um, clear that water out of the system then you can hear your breath sounds much more clearly and, and you don't hear those transmitted sounds anymore Consider the type of ventilation that the patient's receiving. So if your patient's self-ventilating, that will sound a bit different to somebody who's on a ventilator. Of course, if they're on a ventilator, you can't ask them to breathe through their mouth, um, um, but you'll, it, it will sound um, a little bit more maybe hollow um, uh, because you're hearing that air also transmitted through a lot of tubing rather than um, just from the airways. Again, with a ventilated patient, checking for pooling secretions above the cuff of the endotracheal tube or the tracheostomy. So if they've got upper airway secretions that are, um, that are trapped um, effectively um, above the cuff, then that can be um, transmitted through and, and you hear again sort of noisy crackles and you might think that their chest sounds terrible when it's actually not so bad. If you've got audible secretions, so in your self-ventilating patient where you've got a load of um, crackles at the top of the throat that you can hear before you even put your stethoscope on them, ask them to cough and see if they can clear some of that away first because all you're going to hear is those transmitted sounds in the trachea um, transmitted everywhere and you're not going to get a true picture of what their lungs sound like. And then be aware of any sort of movement of your stethoscope. So if your movements, if your stethoscope is kind of moving on their chest at all, um, or if you've got a hairy chest that means that you get sort of tiny movements of the stethoscope, um, then it can sound a bit like a crackle. Um, surgical emphysema is a condition where you've got air within the soft tissue. So um, you can that can sound like crackles as well. You hear this sort of snap crackle and pop type sounds um, over where you're listening but you could hear that um, you're hearing that over tissue rather than the lung another couple of things to note would, about problem solving is like i said before about making sure your stethoscope's in the right way around and that you've got the diaphragm sort of turned around to the open um setting 
So moving on to talk about the, some of the breath sounds that we'll hear. When you're interpreting breath sounds, um, it's important to think systematically about it, particularly when you're learning to interpret different sounds. So we can hear normal breath sounds and a starting point when you're listening is, can you hear breath sounds everywhere? And then you can think, are these normal? If you're not hearing breath sounds everywhere, is there some, is there absent breath sounds or is it quiet? Um, so noting any um, difference in the sort of volume from left to right. We can hear bronchial breath sounds. And then there's added sounds on top of the, those normal breath sounds or quiet breath sounds. So crackles and wheezes, for example. So if you think, as you listen, can you can I hear breath sounds everywhere? Are these at the appropriate volume? So can I hear normal breath sounds or is it quiet in one particular area? Or does it sound harsh and bronchial, which we'll come on to in a minute? And then is there anything on top of that? So a normal breath sound is produced by the passage of air in and out of the lungs. And we're hearing the transmission of this sound through the, through the chest wall. There's no real pause between inspiration and expiration, um, but inspiration um, sounds twice as long as expiration. So only like one third of the expiration is really heard. Now there are some sound clips, that, um, there's a link at the end of this presentation to get some sound clips and you can compare normal with abnormal. Also, um, if you've got an opportunity to practice on um, friends, colleagues or family, then you're likely to hear some normal breath sounds. More likely to hear normal breath sounds than anything else, so you can get used to what they sound like. Um, you'll tend to find that the upper lobes do sound louder than the bases because those uh, that, it's where you're hearing the air sort of passing first really and that, um, it, it's transmitted more loudly. Quiet breath sounds um, can occur over the chest of someone who's breathing quite shallowly. So um, you can try this when you're practicing with a, a friend or um, a family member or colleague. Um, take, get them to take a deep breath and get them to take a more shallow breath and you'll hear the difference. What we're hearing with patients it, um, might be that they're not taking particularly good breaths or that they're in a poor position and they're not expanding very well. Um, but if we're hearing it in one particular area, so local quietness, it's likely to be um, telling you that there's some sort of pathology there. As I said, con consider the position and size, but it might also be that there's a, an area of collapsed lung or atelectasis, um, a pleural effusion, so um, you can't hear the transmission so well because there's a barrier there or a pneumothorax where you've got no air um, you know, transmitting in that, you know, that in that lung. Areas of collapse or atelectasis um, will be smaller areas but again you've got an area of lung where there's there's no air really transmitting so or very little air so you're going to hear um, diminished breath sounds. Bronchial breath sounds um, are harsher breath sounds, they sound more hollow than normal breath sounds um, and we often refer to them being a bit like Darth Vader. It's because you're hearing the air transmitted, the breath sounds transmitted through solid tissue. So as opposed to a normal breath sound where the lung is nicely aerated and the, that you hear a sort of clearer transmission, when you've got solid matter it becomes this more solid, um, this solid noise transmitted. The inspiration and expiration are of equal length and you do get a bit of a pause between the inspiration and expiration and what we usually find is that, is that there's some consolidation there so you've got lots of sort of infective exudative matter that's um, making it dent the lung tissue denser if you've got a large area of collapse then you get very dense lung because that lungs all collapse down Smaller areas of collapse probably wouldn't create bronchial breath sounds because they're not big enough. But when you've got a large area of collapse and you're hearing the air transmitted across that dense collapsed lung, then um, it'll sound bronchial. 
if it's above the level of an effusion, again, you've got this something, a barrier kind of increasing the density. Um, and if you were to listen over your trachea, you will also sort of hear an example of some bronchial breath sounds, so you can try that. So some of the added sounds that we hear um, include wheezes, and there's all sorts of different wheezes that you'll probably come across. Um, it's a sort of musical sound of varying length and pitch. Um, it can be he heard on inspiration and expiration, or it may just be on inspiration. And it's because there's some narrowing or compression of the airways. So that air is whistling through because um, it's going through a sort of smaller space and you've got more turbulence to that airflow. So we get that when we've got bronchospasm with asthma or COPD. Um, if we've got pulmonary edema that could be narrowing the airway, sometimes we get a wheeze. Um, it could be sputum. So if you've got sputum plugs narrowing the airways or if we've got tumours or a mass within the lung that again is compressing the airway or narrowing the airway in some way, then that airflow is disrupted. We can get some sort of noisy popping um, sounds. Um, this can be because we've got um, alveoli that are previously closed and or small airways and then they they pop open so when we've got some areas of collapse um so you might find that this is inspiratory um through inspiratory and expiratory think about whether it's early or late in the phase you can sort of listen through a couple of breaths and just really focus on when you're hearing those crackles coming in you can get fine crackles or coarse crackles and he said atelectasis, um, where you've got these airways popping open, a resolving pneumonia, again pulmonary edema, um, or an inter interstitial lung disease. And um, more recently, we have come across these, uh, this is sort of finer crackles with COVID patients when they've, um, particularly when they've had quite um, significant fibrotic lung damage. Some of the other sounds that we hear um, include stridor, which is a sort of, um, sort of high pitched wheeze, but it's due to a large airway or a tracheal obstruction. You'll hear this from the end of the bed. You won't need your stethoscope, um, but it would, hear, it would appear the same, same sound throughout the lungs. Um, and this is really an urgent um, problem because the main airway is, um, is, is in trouble. So that could be caused by um, a croup, a mass, edema. So if somebody has an allergic reaction, then you get a bill, you know, you get edema that would cause stridor. Plural rub is a sort of creaky sound, like walking in the snow, um, and it's usually at the same point of inspiration and expiration. And we get this with pleurisy or inflammation. So sometimes you'll get this um, with a pneumonia where there's some related inflammation. Um, it's not something we commonly hear, but you may come across this. And there's a sound clip with, in the link. So, this website at 3m.com um, has all the lung sounds. If you go to the um, QR code, if you scan that QR code, it will take you to the link. It's best to try and listen to these with some headphones in um, rather than on speakers, it kind of distorts the sound. The list of breath sounds there um, are the, what, the key ones that we've covered in this presentation that um, would be important for you to listen to the sound clips of. There are other sound clips available on that website, but those are the particular ones that um, I, I would recommend that you have a listen to. Finally, the last thing to um, say is try to listen to as many chests as possible. So when you start your placement, um, any patients where you're doing a respiratory assessment, you can have a listen to the chest. 
um, try and get a chance to do that so that you can listen to lots of different um, sounds and just familiarise yourself with those sounds. Auscultation gets better with practice um, and also the practicality of it in terms of what you're handling, where you're placing your stethoscope. So um, once you join us on placement, we'll try and find you lots of opportunities to practice.